Good morning, people of St Elizabeth's, other folk who may be watching in. It's lovely to meet with you again in this way. As you may have got used to by now, this is a short talk with reflection, with a reflection to be used in conjunction with one of our services. In this occasion, our Wednesday morning communion service on the 27th of May. So let's begin with the reading. The reading is from uh, the book of Acts chapter 20 verses 28 to the end and we'll hear of Paul, St Paul, speaking to the elders of the church in Ephesus which he is just about to leave. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, some will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. Be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Then when he had said this, he knelt down with them all and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them the most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. We are in the week between the church celebrating Jesus' Jesus's ascension and the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So we have a reading set for today which talks about the role of the Holy Spirit in the church, with the Holy Spirit guiding those who are overseers of the church, who have episkopos, that is, in language we are used today, to be bishops in the church. For purpose of context, Paul is saying farewell to the church that he's helped to grow in Ephesus before moving on to Jerusalem. He's giving the leaders of the church there a team talk. He's encouraging them, but also telling them that the church would face difficult times with persecution from those who would want to threaten the good news of Jesus, making it more legalistic, giving it a traditional Jewish feel. Paul also talks about how he looked after his own needs, not being a burden on the church in Ephesus. And he talks about his passion for being an apostle. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning you, he said, with tears. There is a deep passion for the church that Paul is wanting to convey. There was an article in the Times a couple of days ago that told how the new Archbishop of York, Stephen Cotterill, had been tasked with looking at the structure of the National Church. It should have less dioceses, less number of churches, less bishops. The issue of church structure is magnified as we journey through this pandemic and beyond. There can be no doubt that this pandemic will affect the shape of many things and the church will not be left out of this. Working from home will, I'm sure, become the new norm for many businesses and the high street will be further shaped by what has happened. I wonder how many shops will not be opening again, ever, from June the 15th. Such change will affect the church too. I can't say I know how at this point. 
I don't imagine that the Bishop of York's review will be completed that quickly. Yet every diocese is aware that things will change, both in the short term and, I imagine, quite radically in the longer term. As a local church, we are beginning to wonder what physically meeting together may look like. The diocese is asking every parish how, how the pandemic will affect its finances. And as part of its five year plan, every deanery is to be reviewed. And that was stated before the pandemic happened. Where am I going with this? Well, I think we can see that the post-COVID church will evolve into something different from the present. It will not be a case of returning to business as usual over the coming weeks, however much people hope that might be so. In the shorter term, we will not all be able to gather together. I'd be very surprised if our worship would involve singing or communion as it was just a few months ago. And that's before you get to the more longer term issues of finances and the use of resources. But this reading must help us to journey into the future with encouragement and fortitude. This reading makes it clear that it is the spirit, the spirit of Jesus, which drives the church forward. It is not us. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. The role of bishops is there to catch the breeze of the Holy Spirit and to steer the church institutionally in that direction. As local churches, it's our place to do that too, to catch the breeze of the Holy Spirit and with the same passion that Paul speaks of, to go forward in faith. I guess that means that as a local church, we should be doing all we can to understand the work of the Holy Spirit and to then boldly follow its lead. It strikes me that if the Archbishop of York has been charged with a review of the National Church, however long it will take, actually I have no idea how long it will take, but in the light of our present situation, I don't think it will be an excessive length of time. If he's doing that, well, I think the church will evolve, become leaner, become fitter. And if we trust the work of the Holy Spirit, which so often we speak about doing as a church, but actually we resist it if it looks like things may change. But if we are to trust the work of the Spirit, if we can journey forward with the same passion that Paul describes in this reading, then the church will continue to flourish. You know, one thing I think it's fair to say of the church nationally over these past weeks is that it has raised its head well above parapet and others looking on have responded well, be it more looking at worship, be it in the church actively helping others. I believe a positive of this present time is that the church emerges stronger and more active with a newfound focus as a result. And in the longer term, as it seeks to discern the breeze of the Holy Spirit in a context where the church will simply need to evolve, it will become stronger and more active if we now, as church, prayerfully and diligently seek to engage with the work of the Holy Spirit. Something we say we do, but do not always do, with the same passion that Paul describes here. Yet if we can do, however challenging the journey ahead, so the church will be stronger, fitter for purpose and more effective in communicating its message of God's love to others. Oh, and within that, do remember to pray for our bishop, for Martin and the Suffolk and bishops elect, Will and Ruth. Remember them in your prayers 